Hey, what's going on, guys? My name is Matthew Matthew Joes, and on behalf of Royal Press College, today we're going to be talking about pneumothorax. So pneumothorax is simply air in the intracranial space causing a lung to collapse, and there's two types: primary and secondary. And the symptoms are sudden sharp pain, as well as paralytic chest pain, dyspnea, as well as you know high presence during percussion. And please do pause the video. So on the screen now, this is just the regional anatomy, and you can see the intracranial space, as well as the visceral pleura and the um, prior to pleura. On the screen now you have a CT scan of a pneumothorax and I've labelled the different parts. So on the right you can clearly see uh, the black space is where the air is filled and you can see the air, lung collapse compared to the other side. So this is one way of confirming it's a pneumothorax. Um, the different types of uh, pneumothorax, mainly you want to be uh, concentrating on the two red ones, primary and secondary. Secondary is patients with some sort of disease like asthma, COPD, uh, well, primary, you know, happens in young individuals during diving, flying, and smoking. So on the screen now, you have a chest X-ray. So looking at look, if you look towards the right lung compared to the left, you can see a tracheal deviation. You can also see a mediastinal shift, so the heart is pushed to the right, as well as air filled, causing the whole lung to be smaller compared to the opposite side. And this confirms you have a pneumothorax. And needle aspiration is you only using a primary pneumothorax where the amount you co uh, collect air trapped is less than 2.5 litres. If it's above, you use other things. So first, so we're concentrating on uh, surgery. So you want to put the patient in a semi-recumbent position, so 35 to 40 degrees. You take an ultra scan, and this ultra scan is uh, used to monitor exactly, so basically it's used to pinpoint where the pneumothorax is so you can carry out the insertion. Next, you prepare the patient by administrating oxygen. You then want to also prepare the patient to check the vitals by giving them an oximeter. So you put an oxygen saturation across their fingers. You also want to measure their blood pressure as well as ECG. So you want to put a blood pressure cuff around the arm. And um, next, you want to attach the ECG leads. In different hospitals and different NHS trusts, there will be different ways. And then you want to attach the intravenous catheter. So once you've prepared the patient, the next place is you want to palpate the midclavicular line in the second intercostal space. And this is going to be the landmark where you're going to insert. So I've drawn the lines, red and black. So the midclavicular line in the second intercostal space can be palpated using your fingertips, which you may see many doctors doing. And um, this is the point where you found with your ultrasound. It can be different in other patients, but mainly this is the place you want to put a uh, marker. You want to put a mark on that region where you're going to put an insertion using a marker pen, a special surgical marker pen surgeons would have in their hand. You want to clean that area first before you do that. You want to anti set. You want to dress appropriately, and then using an antiseptic solution or swab, you want to clean around the area, not just dot around the area. And then next, you drape the patient, allowing just that area of insertion to be exposed, where you're going to carry out your insertion procedure. Next, you want to do is administer a 1% lidocaine, which is a local anesthetic. You take it with a 22 gauge needle, and once you remove that, you change the 22 gauge needle into a 25 gauge needle, which is shown on the screen as red. Um, once you change the 22 gauge needle to 25. On the bottom screen, you can see uh, you're going to insert the needle only into the superficial fascia. So you're not going straight into the muscles or into costal muscles. If you watch carefully on the bottom part of the screen, you anesthetic into the subcutaneous tissue, as written on the screen. So notice where the needle stopped. And this is to allow, so next, when you change the needle and pierce further in, you don't feel it. So you know you're anesthetized on that area. You want to then change the needle. And then you want to insert the needle perpendicular to anesthetize the deeper tissue. Now you've reached, on this bottom screen, you can see you've reached the intercostal muscles. And bearing in mind, you don't want to cause any damage to the intercostal neurovascular bundles. So be careful. As you gently press forward slowly, you will then uh, reach the parietal uh, layer, which is the first layer. And then you have the pleural cavity and then you have the visceral layer so you want to pierce through the parietal layer as shown on the screen and as, as soon as you pierce through the parietal layer you see bubbles occurring and this confirms that there is air trapped within the pleural cavity so there is a pneumothorax present. Now make a mental note of the depth of the penetration and the landmark. Now you want to change, remove the 22 gauge needle 
and you want to create, you want to put on an over needle catheter. So now a catheter is basically simply a tube which you can attach other things on. So this is a catheter which contains a needle too. So now you again go straight through, slowly advancing by millimeter by millimeter and into the pleuretic space which you've already punctured first time around with a 22 gauge needle. Now you want to remove, uh, as you're doing this, you want to, the main thing is you want to encourage your patient to exhale. Remove the syringe and needle from the catheter immediately but at the same time as you're doing this you want to put your thumb across it so to prevent any air from entering inwards so you don't want to make the pneumothorax worse than it is already so as you can see on the screen now the surgeon places his thumb over the needle now you want to get a three-way valve which is shown on the screen and attach it to the catheter select a 50 mil syringe this is the normal, normal syringe that you use for a needle aspiration you attach the needle uh, syringe uh, to the three-way valve. Now on the bottom screen on the left you can see there's a play on thing. The valve has to be corrected. Now the valve has to be turned to the correct position in order to uh, allow air to flow into the syringe as you pull up. Right, and Then you want to turn the valve back down as you see on the left. So now you can expel that air through the other valve which is open into the atmosphere. Right, if you, this is clearly important that you change the valve around. If you don't, then whatever air you collected goes straight back into the chest cavity, pleural cavity again, which you don't want. Now you repeat this procedure many times until all the air is cleared. And on the bottom left, you can see air, so the pleural space is reduced, and now the lung has almost returned to its original space. Now you finish off with a sterile dressing. So when you do take the catheter out, please do uh, put a thumb over it to stop any air going in. And you want to also request for a post-procedure x-ray to make sure the patient is okay. So on the post-procedure x-ray, you'll see the lung has returned to its normal size. And you can see the vasculature and everything. And there is no tracheal deviation or medial sternal shift. So thank you again for watching the video. On behalf of Royal Christ College, I hope you like the video. Subscribe, share the things. And see you again.